Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Joe Hindi, the Android Authority app guy, and this is Google Play Weekly. Samsung has announced that Open Mobile ACL will be available on Tizen phones starting from day one. What this means is that Android apps will be available to be run on Tizen. This is a big deal because Tizen is brand new and has like no apps at all. Open Mobile ACL will be made available on the Tizen App Store on day one so people can actually have applications to use. There are 1,000 supported apps right now, which isn't that much, but it's better than what was available before. Some new stats have shown that the Google Play Store grew faster than any other app store in 2014. The stat measured the total number of applications and the total number of developers compared to previous years. Google Play grew to 1.43 million applications by the end of last year, while iOS is sitting pretty at 1.21 million. Of course, Amazon was also measured and they've got about 300,000 applications overall. According to the numbers, all three app stores actually did grow in 2014, but Google Play outpaced all of them. Earlier this week, Google released Google Classroom to the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. It's important because this is essentially the portal to the Google Apps for Education platform and it was previously only available on the web. Some notable features include the ability to snap a photo of something and upload it to Google Classroom and the ability to share things from other applications straight to Google Classroom. It's basic, but it can be a powerful tool for educators. Google Play Maps is going to be updated very soon and you will finally be able to share directions. This seems like something basic that should have always been there, but surprise, it totally wasn't. Now when you look up directions, you can tap the three dot menu and share those directions to others, which is a great feature if you're meeting someone somewhere or carpooling somewhere. Additionally, you can now permanently dismiss those obnoxious location settings warnings. It will be rolling out sometime in the near future. In our last bit of news this week, Facebook at work is a thing that now exists. Okay, so this is actually a totally separate social network from the regular Facebook and it aims to bring that Facebook simplicity to businesses so they can communicate better and easier. It'll compete with existing networks such as Slack and Yammer along with others. It's only available for the web and iTunes right now which totally sucks, but an Android application is coming eventually. We'll reserve judgment on how good or bad it is until we actually try it out. So who wants to see some trending applications? As usual, if you want to check any of these applications out, you can find the links in the video description below. Google Translate got a huge update this last week. Included is a new word lens feature that lets you point your camera at something and have it translated for you in real time. The other big feature is instant voice translation where, much like word lens, translations happen on the fly and in real time. If you need translation, Google Translate proves again that it is the king on Android. AC Display is a popular lock screen replacement application that was recently updated to version 3.0. The new update brings support for Lollipop, a new material design inspired interface, and a host of bug fixes and performance improvements. It's one of the better apps that emulates the Moto Active Display with the notifications and the clean look. It's free to download if you're interested. Google Now Launcher was updated this last week. The update includes some material design elements to those running Android 4.1 through 4.4, and that includes some animations, some button changes, and other minor aesthetic changes. It's not a huge update, but those who want a more Lollipop-style experience that don't already run Lollipop should definitely appreciate it, and it's rolling out right now. Falcon Pro 3 was released this last week. It improves on prior iterations of the application by including boatloads of material design, improved performance, easier navigation, and a whole lot more. It is a brand new release and that means there are some bugs, so if you try it out, do keep that in mind. If you don't want buggy software, give the developer a couple of weeks to fix up the problems and give it a try then. Adobe released Adobe Lightroom Mobile for Android and pretty much any name brand release from Adobe is good news. It has a pretty decent set of features including desktop syncing and considering it's an early release, it works fairly well. The bad news is that you'll need a Creative Cloud account once the trial expires and that sucks for those who bought the software and don't use Creative Cloud. If you want to check out the latest news and reviews about Android apps and games, head on over to AndroidAuthority.com, click on the little menu thingy, and check out the application section. And if you want to join the discussion, head on over to AndroidAuthority.com slash community, set up an account, and join us in the forums. I will see you there. Once again, I'm Joe Hindi, the Android Authority app guy. While you're here, why not subscribe to the Android Authority YouTube channel? If you're hanging out for a minute, we have a couple of awesome videos for you to watch right over there, and they're linked in the video description below for you folks on mobile. Finally, don't forget to check out the written companion, which is in the video description below. As always, thanks for watching, everybody, and have a wonderful day.